This aircraft is unlike anything you have ever seen. It has two cabins side by side with no middle. It's 20% more fuel efficient and has a seat layout that is more bold, if not ambitious. And the best part is, it's brand new. That's right, this design isn't from the 1940s or the Cold War, but 2019. Is this aircraft and other blended wings just like it the next step in aerospace engineering? This is the latest generation of aircraft design and it could very well be our future. This is The Flying V. Planes haven't actually really changed. Sure, they got faster, even breaking the sound barrier. They got bigger too, with double decks and six engines. And they even got wacky with double fuselages to carry more than what was needed. But one key component remains the same, the tube and the wings. Now, it didn't always have to be like this. It just happens that the most efficient way to build an aircraft, perform maintenance and keep it cheap is with a tube, a wing and engines slung underneath. That is until now. This concept is called a blended wing and it's always been a bit of an odd outlier for aerospace engineering. The concept is relatively straightforward. Instead of having a tube and wings, why not make the wings the plane? This would massively increase the internal area, reduce the surface area, and increase the fuel efficiency. Even the most basic blended wing design would be approximately 20% more fuel efficient than a standard wing design of the same size. Boeing, Airbus and others have always been working on blended wings. In fact, it can be traced back to Northrop back in World War II and the Horton brothers from the Nazis who had their plans to create a massive blended wing America bomber. But the design never really took off, pun intended. That is until now with the Flying V. This concept is such a novel design that it truly deserves its own video, which is what you're watching right now. So let's get into it. The Flying V is such a revolutionary idea, it makes you wonder what else we can improve. Say, how we watch documentaries. That's when Magellan TV steps in, a documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers and today's video sponsor. Magellan TV has the richest and most varied science content available anywhere, covering space, physics, technology, health, nature, and science history. In particular, I love the documentary Bomber Boys of World War II, narrated by Ian McGregor. Yeah, the Obi-Wan Kenobi guy. Now known as the Bomber Boys, these daring flyers played a critical role in defeating Adolf Hitler's Nazi forces and securing victory for the Allies in World War II. They also have plenty of other content on history, true crime, travel and more, and with 15 to 20 hours of new content added each week for no additional cost, there's always something to watch. No ads, and on all devices, and the first month free, there's no excuse not to check out Magellan TV with the link in the description. The Flying V was developed as a concept at Delft University of Technology by Justice Bernard whilst working with Airbus. It is a Flying V shape, hence the name, and can carry up to 314 passengers in a mixed configuration. You'll notice that this is the same capacity well, technically one seat less than the Airbus A350-900, which seats 315 passengers over two classes. Speaking of this plane, the Flying V has roughly the same wingspan as an Airbus A350 and fits the same mission profile, allowing it to use the same infrastructure at airports, gates, taxiways and runways without any modification. An issue that plagued the massive Airbus A380 when it arrived to the world in the past. In terms of cargo capacity, it is around 160 meters cubed of cargo space on board, which fits 36 pallets, allowing it to be the very same cargo capacity as the aforementioned Airbus. But here's the catch, it has a much lower surface area on the outside than a standard plane, meaning that the resistance is lower and it needs far less fuel. 
operating at around 20% less consumption, a huge saving for an airline over a year of flying. The twin engines that are powering this aircraft are placed above the fuselage to keep the noise away from the cabin and allow access for engineering, an issue that all blended wing internal engines have had in the past designs. But speaking of the cabin, you thought that the outside was crazy, wait till you see the inside. We're all very familiar with the design of an aircraft's interior and its classes. Business with lie flat seats and the economy cabin stuffed to the rim. With the Flying V, they decided to do something uh, very different. The two cabins that are connected in the middle, there is an opportunity to greatly expand the available space. Looking at a seat map, it looks like the two cabins are in fact fused together in the middle with two passenger cabins at slightly awkward angles. Side note, I love the fact that these business class seats at the front all kind of look at each other as well as the big cabin. But otherwise, the rest of the cabin matches what you would expect with a typical plane. There's just two of them. But if you are reinventing the plane, why not reinvent the cabin experience as well? The Flying V designers also came up with four new seat concepts based on travel patterns. The first is the group seat. This area features two sets of two-seater benches that face each other with a table in the middle. Approximately 28 of passengers travel together in groups and thus these would be very popular with families or large business teams traveling together. We know for a fact that trains do the same thing as well as Qatar who does the same with their Q-suites. So the idea has merit. Next, we have the private seats. These seats are angled towards the direction of motion instead of the front of the cabin. Because they're staggered, there is an offset to allow more shoulder and leg space. And it'll also be more private and relaxing than the typical economy cabins that we have today. Next, we have the flat bunk beds. Because the inside side of the Flying V doesn't have any windows or is not designed to be looked out of, after all, there isn't much of a view, the space has benches that can be converted from seating three into three private bunks. After all, 60% of passengers want to sleep on a long haul flight, so this would be perfect. But the last design is perhaps the most brave, the lounge seats. These would be swings that stack on top of one another, allowing passengers to rotate into different postures for eating, sleeping, or watching movies. Every second row is mounted to the ceiling to maximize space. Which is your favorite design? Would you fly on this? Let me know down in the comments. But let's just talk about the flaws with this concept, and there are some pretty big ones. So far, the Flying V concept has been successfully tested with Airbus as a scale model, roughly 22.5 kilograms big and three meters wide, testing the airframe and proving the concept could eventually overcome the dreaded rotation issue. This is where the plane would spiral over its own axes when coming into land in a somewhat of a Dutch roll, something that as a passenger, you wouldn't want to experience, and a feat only done by a certain Boeing 707 in the past that you can watch right here. From here, the team would conduct more tests on the model and hope to upgrade the Flying V with a sustainable propulsion system such as hydrogen. A hydrogen powered plane that I covered completely right here on the channel just last year. So the big question you might have after this video is, will we ever see a blended wing passenger plane? I'm afraid the answer might be, not anytime soon. There are many different issues, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to money. The Flying V or blended wing designs would require wholly new manufacturing lines, new skill sets, and new technology to build. Airlines would also need to train a whole new generation of pilots with this new type of aircraft, and cabin crew would be hard pressed to evacuate the design in the required time. And that's just it. The advantage of a simple tube and wings plane is that everyone is close to a wall. With a blended wing, approximately half the passengers will be located away from an exit that 
in case of a fire would struggle to evacuate in time. And you can imagine that airlines trying to convince passengers to board this new type of flying V, or the boomerang as they would probably market it, they would have a hard time indeed. While flying wings are slowly seeing the light of day, such as the B-2 and others for military applications, it remains to be seen if the passenger version can take the magic leap from paper to the sky. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to support the channel more, then we have channel members and a Patreon.